qualification, say maybe. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. But I was I was very impressed that just from one best of three to another best of three, that that stat would change so enormously. Yeah. I mean, as a coach, right, you look at that type of thing, and that's a very easy problem point to identify. <laughs> but then actually okay. having the player follow through with it, that's kind of the craziest part. Let me tell you something about coaching League of Legends, Noah. Sure, yeah. Go ahead. Players do not like to buy wards. Oh, really? No, they hate wards. They're they like, don't understand why, they're... why would I buy this ward when my teammate should buy the ward instead and I should get these sweet deeps? That's what they think. So They don't I... understand, man. <laughs> wards are the most powerful items in the game. All right, Zed Ban actually against Goong and the LeBlanc as well. So some of Goong's best champions taken right out. Kalista targeted at OQ. No more Sivir yeah. for Captain Jack and Rek'Sai. Moved as well. What will the last ban be? Lulu. Uh, so Morgana will be available this time, that early ban. Uh, uh, Rek'Sai not available. Okay. Maokai is still up as well. Yeah, Morgana Ari. Powerful pickups here, potentially for Jin Air. I would think about the first pick, Maokai, to keep it away from Duke. I'd be pretty worried. What do you think? I think Duke wants that solo matchup with Nar. His Nar was still okay in the last game, and yeah. I think had he gotten the 1v1, he really could have punished Trace. That's really not a very good matchup for Maokai. You take a lot of harassment. It was certainly one of the better Nars we've seen, but I, I still think Nar just is not strong. And it looks yeah. like they will go ahead and first pick that Maokai. I think that's a good decision. You know, I mean, I, if I were Jin I'd be like, sure, Duke, you want to play Nar? We know you're good. Go ahead. Go ahead and play Nar. I just, I feel like there are other options too for Najin with the first pick Maokai. You can also play Rumble into it, so you have a, some choices. Oh. And they may just go ahead. Okay, Jin Air is apparently just yeah. turned into the personification of IEM Katowice. I Game so. one, they run a TSM composition, and now they're just like, all right, Spirit, you were right. We should first pick Charm. Like, <laughs> what, what is going on? <laughs> it's the spirit within. Jin Air, Jin Air is just, they're like, Okay, they beat the Korean teams. We will now absorb their powers. <laughs> if they beat the Korean teams, then we can beat Korean teams too. And we're even Korean. This works out so well. Let's first pick Jarvin. <laughs> it's actually really funny. The logic is just undeniable. And uh, Rumble Corky, pretty strong. Couple of champions picked up by Najin. And like you mentioned, that Maokai pick, you know, still a little bit weaker into the, into the Rumble. Yep. But something that they won't be afraid to do. Now, I wonder, uh, GBM, they left Zareth open. Now, against Goom, who's so good with assassins, is this a bit too dangerous? And against Goom's Ari. Yep. This is scary, actually, for Jyn Air. You know what I'd actually be slightly worried about is Twisted Fate, honestly. Yeah, that's true, too. There's, yeah. There is some threat of that right there. Although oh, but maybe. <laughs> GBM just trolling right now. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Chaser uh, and Che having some laughs there as well. So yeah, they're Jana, just waiting for the 5 5. I like the Lissandra pickup here. GBM is so good on Lissandra. Yep, going for that Ignite as well. Looks like. Just wait for 5.5, .5, then the Amumu will make a comeback. <laughs> Forget Sejuani, and the it's Nautilus. all about Amumu. Nautilus, we're, yes. Yeah, we were looking at SKT uh, Tom's ladder rankings, and he's been spamming Nautilus in solo yeah. queue with that new jungle enchantment, placing next, the juggernaut. Next match, guys, SKT Tom, their new jungler. He's an Udyr main. He's so good on Udyr as well, but yeah, he's been playing a ton of Nautilus in solo queue. We won't see that today, of course. We're selling 5.4 for now. But I hope we do see the Udyr today, though. Yeah, that is possible. That is possible. I'd be very happy. I wonder if they'll just ban it. Nah, probably not. The I first, think you... First Udyr ban we've seen in a long Udyr, time. Udyr is very kiteable at the professional level, which is why we don't see him very much. Well, it's the old Volibear conundrum, right? And although Udyr can peel a little bit better That's than Volibear... That's the thing about Udyr, though, that you mentioned, is that it's his peeling abilities, and yeah. we'll talk about it more later if it's picked up, but he he may be able to do very well in a double AD composition. You don't just want to keep talking about Udyr for the next 10 minutes during this pick ban? No. You can, you can just do that. I don't it's want okay. to. It's okay. I, re you build, I reject your plan. Build Trinity Force on him, you know, eye edge. <laughs> Oh, we'll see what they decide to pick up here. It was Lee Sin and Thresh for Najin. Yeah, Najin saving that mid counter pick. They want to see where the Lissandra is going. Oh, well, they would be going full IEM with the Oswo pick, but not in a good way. There we go. Okay, Zareth for uh, GBM. Looks like that Lissandra will go to Trace in the top They're going to play Ari for sure. Would make a lot of sense, wouldn't it? Did Goon used to play a decent amount of Twisted Fate, if I remember right. It's been a he while. Played, he played some games. Yeah, yeah. 
Wasn't like he wasn't quite a Dade, but he did play a good amount. Well, nobody, except nobody for maybe Messiah, has been a Dade on, <laughs> on Twisted Fate. That's true. Song, of course, very good. Back in the day, yeah. If you remember the old champions' times with Najin Sword, Songs Dade or Songs Dade, Songs Dade. Songs Dade, yes, that's right. Doing a lot of work. Mafa's Blitzkrieg. Wow, it's taking them a lot of time here to press Ari. Maybe they're uh, press Ari. I think. Well, I mean. What about TF? Yeah, I'm TF the, is fine. I'm on the TF hype train. Dostoramis calling the picks. Except for that first one, forget that one. It wasn't Maokai, but TF, there you yeah, go. TF, we did, We have seen, of course, Coco play TF uh, and do quite well and keep the pressure on in the laning phase. I think as well totally. as I mean, it's, it's again, that same matchup that we saw from CJ yeah. earlier this week on Wednesday when Coco went nuts on the, the Zareth and was able to really port into the back lines and threaten him. And TF is definitely a good pick against Zareth, so. I think they very intentionally left that Zareth open to bait this. Well, they, uh, they have a couple choices, right, from Goong, obviously. I, the Ari, the more natural choice, because that is one of Goong's strongest champions, uh, just him as a player. But we'll see if his TF can affect some of these other lanes. He doesn't have the same amount of hard CC in his side lanes that Coco had going for him, of course. Duke. Yeah. Uh, he's going to be more useful for counter ganking for Duke in the top side if, if he pushes in too far. Well, Jin Air is still a very threatening team with their composition as well, too. I, I really like the Janna that Che is going to be bringing in along with that Graves. Graves versus Cor Corky is always a good thing, too. Yeah, and also it's GBM and Trace and Captain Jack bring so much burst damage. Yeah. They can absolutely annihilate somebody. So Goon's going to have a hard time staying alive, actually. True enough. Well, we'll see if Janair can get that 2 0, or if Najin will stay alive in the series. Time to get in the game. Here we are, welcome once again to Summoner's Rift, Jin Air versus Najin the Empire. And Jin Air, a lot of fans, bigger cheer for Najin before this game. I think they woke up a little bit. It wasn't a bad game by Najin last game, but they just couldn't quite handle the pressure from Jin Air. I'm actually a bit worried about Najin because the thing is, with this much burst from Jin Air between Lissandra, Zareth, and Graves, Najin is really item dependent in this game. They they have to be able to get Zonya's Hourglasses onto Goong and Duke just in order to stay alive. Well, yeah. Um, so while this composition does have a very strong mid-game power spike for Najin, in terms of that Corky and that Rumble, obviously the TF ult coming into play as well, they, they have to be super careful because if they want to take this into the mid and late game and actually team fight, they need, they have to hit items. So, they're going to have to have a very strong laning phase. Otherwise, they're just going to get instantly annihilated by Jin Air. Uh, and I'm just, not, I'm not really feeling it, but if they can get enough of a lead out of the laning phase, I think they can do something. But otherwise, all things being equal, when they hit their mid-game power spike, Jin Air is also going to be very strong in terms of poke and burst. So they don't really have a clear-cut advantage. They have to play the map really, really well here until they reach the late game and can get those Zonias, can get those Abyssal Scepters that will actually keep them alive. So what do you think about this lane swap coming in for Jin Air? I suppose understandably not wanting the uh, rumble Lissandra matchup. Is it that bad? It's, nah, it's fine. Uh, OQ and Pure will be taking the Gromp right there. A little bit faster, but they they missed the uh, the lane freeze. So keep an eye on what Trace is going to do right here as we do see a bit of a jungle follow. Ward onto the red buff, so they'll know when that is going on. So by going for that crump, maybe Najin expecting the 2v2 yeah. this game. Otherwise, you wouldn't want to do that. Yeah, definitely yeah. not the best choice. Although John and Corky could be really, or John and Graves rather, could be really hard to deal with because he uh, gets so much extra damage from the yeah. Eye of the Storm onto his abilities. There's some really good harassment. Oh, but nice poke by GBM. GBM is, you know, the best Aerith player. So. Certainly is, and Goong may be in a little bit of trouble here. Are they going to get a chance to gank? Yeah, Goong pulling back just in time. He's like, wait a second, this is extremely dangerous. And so he goes back up again. No card, no stun, and there's a knock up. 
flashes. Can they get him? Goon flashes away as well. Pops that ghost. They're chasing. And there it is. GBM just with the Q gets that first blood. Not the kind of start that Goon wanted in his first game back in a little while. Well, Goon didn't take cleanse this game either yeah, you're right. in a hard CC lane. Naja going to respond by just hard pushing this bottom turret. Yeah. Actually going for this instead of making a play elsewhere, Trace has to back off. So we'll see if there is going to be a response at the top side. Goon coming back to lane right now. But Najin actually getting some global gold out of that. So using the fact that they showed the jungler and support in the mid lane just to oh, yeah. make a play onto the turret. Interesting. But that's going to deny the Duke a lot of XP because he had to share those waves they did get with triple. like three other people. And they did get triple buffed as well. Able to steal that red on the other side from Peanut. I think they just left one of the uh, small minions away. Oh, Duke! Whoa! What in the world? Trace just is like, HP all right. left. Wow, that is huge, giving that kill up to Trace right there. Man. Because now Trace is going to get so much experience out of this bottom lane. Duke is still only level one because he had to share all that XP while they pushed the turrets. Trace is going to be so happy about this situation. Seriously. Shana coming down now. She will be able to shield the tower in order to help keep it up. Ooh, Trace in a good, good place right now. Still has teleport as well. Duke will TP at least for two. So now the big question is, will Janair finish this game in under 50 minutes? Yeah. Is it possible? <laughs> I don't know. That's what I'm wondering right now. Well, really All tough right, well, start for Najin here. Fortunately for Duke, he did have his TP, so he won't be too far behind. Still. But he's really easily abusable right now because now there's this interesting conundrum for Duke. Do you push forward on this very vulnerable rumble and try and get that tower down? Or do you just have to give up pushing that tower for a really long time and basically sacrifice that death for nothing yeah. at all? And it looks like that's what he's doing. A little bit too dangerous for him. It also sacrifices, you know, Najin's first sort of big team-oriented move of the game, too. All that action and bot gets them nothing. But really, that was extremely important because, uh-oh, here we go. Goong is yeah. no summoners, goodbye. Nice, slow, and Goong is not making it out of this one. Oh, Peanut's trying to help here. Goong still goes down before he loads up that gold card. Peanut manages to flash the Kiwi combo. But here comes Trace coming in with the flash W. Came in with the teleport, and that's two kills for Jin Air. They are already crushing Najin. Look at that. 2,000 gold ahead at about six minutes, and they're going to get a dragon on top of this. Peanut right there, not respecting the TP advantage that Trace had, made it really easy for him to come in, and there yeah. was really nothing he could do besides let Goon die right there with no summoners. GBM hasn't even had to burn a summoner yet. Chaser just all over this mid lane. And GBM is just such a fantastic player. Okay, well, they gave up the turret for it in the end, but at 20 HP, not the biggest deal. Yeah, at this point, I think it's perfectly fine. GBM is now starting to roam on Zareth. Oh, well, he's 3 0, zero already. Oh, my. GBM is such a good Zareth player. Did miss his E right there. Could have been a little bit easier, but yeah. that's... That's kind of nitpicking it, honestly. It's like it's a 3 0 0 Zareth at six minutes. What do you want, Monte Cristo? There's just no pleasing you. Now I know how CLG felt, man. Just can't make Monte happy. It hurts. I won't tell GBM you said that because I don't want him to cry. You know what's funny, Doha, is that this is kind of a mirror of the preseason game that we saw between these two teams. Remember when Goon got like a pentakill at eight minutes into yeah, the game on LeBlanc right. after everybody teleported into the bottom that's side? That's right. And then GBM was like, well, what, what do I do? <laughs> he came back with like a seven minute Morello Domicon as, yeah. as LeBlanc in the lane. GBM was like, oh. He's like, well. Crap. <laughs> it's like uh, AFK. <laughs> You know what's funny? He was playing Lissandra in that game, and actually, he did quite well, considering the circumstances. If I recall, he made some pretty good plays around yeah. Dragon that game, too. Yeah, and he, he baited his Tier 1 really nicely in that game also. Yeah. So there's only so much you can do in that situation. But. See, this is GBM's career, though. He was kind of like forged in the fire of extreme adversity. <laughs> the, gen the, the Genera Falcons uh, training room. <laughs> that's that's I guess so, yeah, that too. Oh boy. Trace, Trace and GBM are just going nuts now. Yeah. Another summoner burned right there. Oof. Nothing used by GBM, just continual pressure. Chaser's back too. I feel so bad for Goog in this situation. He's actually doing okay in terms of farm. Yeah, with considering. His, with his two deaths and how conservatively he's had to play with it, both summoners being down for most of this game so far. Yeah, he's not doing bad. 
Yeah. Pretty good picks up the chalice going for that uh, Athens, it looks like. Okay, well, Goong, it's up to you to turn this game around. He's level six. He doesn't have really any damage, but he's got that gold card, and we'll see if it's also a golden ticket to get Najin back into the game. Something tells me it won't be done. Maybe we need a Willy Wonka Twisted Fate scan where he throws golden tickets at people. <laughs> Only that's a golden ticket you don't want. That's a ticket to the cemetery. Do they sell tickets for cemeteries these days? I don't know. <laughs> if it's like a really cool cemetery, I guess. I don't know. It's like our cemetery. You have to buy. You have to buy them in what, advance, though. What if it's otherwise also you, a otherwise golf course? <laughs> Watch the divots. Replace the divots because you may be exposing people's loved ones. Don't make a golf course on a cemetery. Wise advice, though. I'm sure all the cemetery owners that are watching this game right now are taking you very seriously. But, uh, you know, you do have to buy those cemetery tickets in advance, though, because, <laughs> you know, if you try and buy oh, them when what? you need them, they're just, you can't buy them anymore, so. That's true. It's something you only have one chance, really. Well, you actually have many chances. Oh, okay. But you, they just have to be in advance. Man, Trace is just <laughs> being incredibly irritating in this game. Yes, he Constantly is. Constantly roaming into the mid lane. He's like a second jungler. He's like, well, I don't have a turret, so who cares? Why not go around and get some, get some kills, right? It's just an incredible amount of pressure that they're putting on. Yeah. Man, what a crazy game. Now, basically, Najin... If they can create some picks, they can get back into this one. But like I said, sure. their their composition is so dependent on items just to live through the upfront damage from Jin Air that the fact that Goong is oh, so oh, far Chaser behind might get no, a, not caught. a crab. No, he just stole from the. That's what I was gonna say. He might get a crab. Rift Scuttler, a crab. He got that Rift Coward. Peanut got a ward. So there you go. There's your crab bonus for you. Thirty gold. He ended up actually clearing out two pinks right there. Trace is in the bottom side. He has TP, but Duke actually doing a good job of putting some pressure down mm -hmm. and getting the wards in so that they kill the pink wards. That's good vision control and teamwork on behalf of Duke working with Peanut right there. So a little bit of gold wasted from the Jin Air Green Wings in the end. Jack and Oku just having a nice time farming at the top. Nice Seriously. peaceful time. Yeah, see, like, the rest of the map is, like, Middle Earth, but top lane is, like, Hobbiton right now. Not a lot going on in there. People just farming. Oh, Peanut flashes out of the Whirlwind. That was flashed for by Jay. And the alt, can he do it? One more, and it is enough! Direct hit! You sunk by Lee Sin ship <laughs> in the river. Peanut's like, damn it, I almost got three <laughs> pink wards. But it was too good to be true. That was a very interesting flash tornado from Jay. I don't think he expected that aggressive Janna play to go in. He's going a bit GBM ham in the meantime, game. just going to keep on rolling through towers. Yeah. And Jay and Chase are right there to start choking Peanut out of his own jungle. And they're going to get a really good angle right now. This is actually really dangerous for OQ and Pure. Uh, uh, there's, they they're should about not to get be five there. Mando Holy there, four smokes. Mando. There is TP up Teleport as well. Teleport up for Trace, yeah. Like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. The scourging of the Shire incoming. <laughs> no, there, it'll be okay. That's wait till the end of book three, I guess. Wow, they they were pushed. That was really dangerous. Seriously. Well, a teleport coming in. They're still gonna try it. Wow, Trace. It's like, hey, what's up? I'm in. I'm in your jungle. <laughs> Killing your mans. <laughs> well, they. Could dive right here, actually, if they wanted to, but... It's another ward. Wow, these guys, they... Trace should have done something with that. They, yeah. could, they could have just walked up and yeah, why tried to make some sort of play in the jungler as a unit. Oh, I know why. It's because it's, it's 12 minutes and Captain Jack hasn't gone back to buy yet. Oh, whoops. <laughs> wah, wah. There we go. BF, BF Sword, Pickaxe, Avarice Blade. Yeah, Captain first, first back. He's got 100 CS. Captain Jack had no damage, so they Oops. couldn't make plays. So that ended up being a really bad teleport from Trace because if you can't do anything... You shouldn't teleport? Good, good advice. Yeah. It's my high-level analysis right there. So. John Madden moment. Yeah. <laughs> can't do anything. Don't teleport. But yeah, Jack waiting a really long time to recall, so they can't actually follow up on the play right. with any further aggression. And now... Dragon will be coming up. Najin has a good angle on it at the moment. Nice wave pressure on the bottom side. And they have the Scuttler as well, but 
mid it's is just, a big problem. It seems so wrong to smite the Rift Scuttler. Like, it's just scudding around and someone like comes up and like, I smite thee! <laughs> and this like beam of light from the heavens. Like, what did the Rift Scuttler do to deserve that? Jin Air with a pretty easy dragon here. No resistance, and the first dragon goes to Jin Air. This was okay. a good call from Najin, though. Just go yeah. for the tower instead. Get the immediate global gold bonus when you're behind. You don't need that dragon right now. Better off to take what kind of map control you can, given the really awkward early game for Goon. Yeah. Well, OQ needs to be a little bit careful here. He has a Phage and like a couple other Enneshine, a couple other little random things, but Captain Jack, he's got the big melee weapons. He will shoot you at, shoot them at you out of his shotgun. Ooh, sword shotgun. Yeah. He's scary. Yeah, what is his Final Fantasy? We need more blunderbusses in League of Legends. That's what I think. Well, oh, I guess I was going to say Safari Caitlyn, but that's more of an elephant gun than a blunderbuss. Yeah. Where is the blunderbuss? Ryan. Well, we need something like, um, I don't know, boarding action graves, right? Where he's like a, he's <laughs> a like pirate. one of those, like, well, a pirate or like, you know, an old uh, English naval soldier or something, you know? Right before everybody swings over with ropes, you have the dudes with the blunderbuss clear the deck. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> totally easy skin idea, once again. <laughs> Another great skin idea from Doan Monte Cristo. More blunderbuss is required. Yeah. They should make a blunderbuss item as well. Well, it's it's like historically a cool gun because you can just put anything you want in it. I know. It's great. Yeah. Have you shot a blunderbuss, Doa? No, I have not. I had a friend of mine not. who had a 17th century uh, British blunderbuss. Nice. And we used to put like five pence pieces in it and shoot coins. It was great. Wow. <laughs> cool. Did you ever say like cool taglines like, Here's your change. <laughs> and stuff like that. I did not. Okay. But I should have. You missed I an really, opportunity there. I really screwed that one up. Though. Yeah. Do you collect coins? <laughs> I have an addition for your collection. Oh, here we go. Yep, that's right. DF coming in. They're going to try to make a play. They stun Jay. Captain Jack on the run. A little bit of zoning from Zareth to try to keep people away if he ever decides to use it. Where did Peanut just die? I do. Oh, he just died to. I think he just died to GBM because none of the ults came in where we could see them. So I'd have to imagine. It was just an epic uh, Zareth versus Lee Sin duel in the mid lane. I love the fact that GBM could actually somehow hit a Lee Sin with his ultimate. It's yeah, right. Not the easiest task to accomplish. There we go. Oh, that's a clash. Yeah, that's a good trade. And GBM will be happy to see that blue buff right there as well. Yep. So, nice attempt. Najin has to do something right now, right? Yeah. You might as well attempt to make a play in this current sorry state that you're in. Yeah, but you're massively down. All right, let's watch Peanut's most proud moment ever. Oh, he didn't really make it hard, did he? No. Well, GBM was, is ridiculously accurate with that ultimate as well. This was, is why this is why people ban Zareth against Seriously, Jinair. he's the best Zareth in the world, man. <laughs> Faker wishes his Zareth was as good as GBM. That's actually true. Here comes in the play. Box on Captain Jack. Jay's like, I have to defend my AD carry. Teleport coming down. Will Captain Jack live through this? No, not quite, but they catch OQ as well, so it will be one for two in favor of Jin Air. Ah, nice. A double kill for Lissandra. Yeah, that's what they needed. And a turret. Yeah, it's funny. You referenced this earlier, but if you guys uh, haven't seen it, you should go check out the True LOL show, which is on the On Game Net global YouTube channel. Yeah, all subtitled. Yeah, all nice and subtitled. But he talks about his Aerith right there. And he says in that episode that he, whenever he plays a team, he goes through and watches film of all of their players to see what their dodging tendencies are. So he memorizes which direction each player likes to dodge, right. which increases the accuracy of his Zareth ultimates. That's the lengths he will go to to hit these skill shots, and it really pays off. I mean, he's been playing amazingly. It means GBM is actually reading your mind. He knows <laughs> what you're going to do before you do it in a quite literal sense. What a fantastic Zareth player. Yeah. And like, how do you how do you counter that against GBM? They're like, well, I'm playing against GBM, so I guess I have to like remember in the heat of the moment to dodge in a different direction than I usually do. Yeah, it's not usually that easy to think in advance and eliminate your yeah. your gut instincts and your reflex tendencies. But yeah, coming into this one too, 
Another thing that is very interesting is how well Chaser and Che have been doing at ganking the mid lane in the last couple of Gen Air games. They've That's really put point. a premium. And Che going as far as like Flash Tornadoing a couple of times now in this game, like very aggressively oh. to set up these picks. Oh, missing the knockup on the Duke. Chaser's uh, QE knockups haven't been the best we've seen yet tonight, but he's made up for it by good cataclysms. Yeah, really. Really good cataclysms for the most part. Made a mistake in that one team fight in the last game, but yeah. turned it around pretty quickly. And he's had great pressure throughout this entire game. That's really been kind of the Tra biggest thing he's brought. Trace has been such a boss, too, on this. Lissandra here, Duke over committing to that tower earlier on. And well, then funny. once he got that advantage, he just got rolling and well, funny hasn't enough. looked back. You know, I mean, by Najin taking that turret so early, it freed up Trace to make those plays, too, if they would have let that stand. Trace would have been in the bot lane a lot longer, and there'd be a few less kills on the Jyn Air side, you have to imagine. Yeah, Trace has played his situation quite well. Yeah. And Jyn Air just relentlessly pushing forward right now. They have that pushing advantage. I mean, technically, Oki was in that quirky power spike. He has to dodge everything with the belt. Wow, and this turret in a lot of trouble here, Goon. They have good wave clear, though, so it's... Yeah. That's the thing is, their wave clear is excellent, and they have Graves as an AD carry, so it's not quite so easy to siege down turrets. Well, it's a similar situation that uh, they had last game, right, with Sivir. They just don't have the best siege. Didn't stop them then, but you do need to be a little bit more careful. You kind of need to win a fight outside of the base and then go in. Or use GBM's ult to poke people off turrets. Oh, they have, yeah, they have yeah, a couple options that if is they true. really want a hard siege. But with Dragon Live, they can just poke here instead right around I guess you can the Dragon Pit and see if they can get one. You can dive really hard and just try to blow up the back line. See, as not well, just not too. even trying to defend this, so really oh. easy take from Genera. There are too many wards in the jungle for Najin to really do much of anything at all. Instead, they'll take the opportunity just to push out their waves instead. Well, I mean, look at the difference between these two teams. Goon with the Athenes and the Seeker's Arm Guard and GBM with the Morella Namicon and already a death cap too. So the, the items are quite a bit better on the side of generic green wings right now. I really wonder if GBM is going to go for Zonia's or for Void Staff as his next item, just because that would be safer, especially just to make sure that Goon can't get on him in the back line because a yeah. TF, a TF engage, and then a like a gold card and then Rumble ulting him could actually kill him. So there is a bit of a threat right there. I think Zonia's would be smarter. I agree. It's the safer choice, but yeah. if GBM is confident in not getting into that situation, then he can go for the more aggressive option of he a void staff and just try and chunk people out. He just like twirls his Batman bow tie and he's like, "Don't worry, guys, it'll be fine. I'm just gonna build damage this game." <laughs> Well, the, the correct answer is first he will get some spell pen boots. I think that's good as well. A little bit more speed all the time. And upgrading his trinket. We, we've seen GBM go for that stealth totem. Yeah. The upgrade stealth totem both the game so far tonight, really valuing that vision. And I think it's really good for Victor and Zareth, who tend to be these immobile mid laners that are vulnerable to flanks. So it does allow you to play up further in lane by yourself without relying on your support or jungle for as many wards in order to keep pressure in the laning phase. So it's a good pickup, actually. I feel like we've seen Jyn Air in general doing doing a pretty good job of upgrading their yeah. uh, upgrading their trinkets their, at their a timely manner. Their trinket upgrading last game was really good. The timing yeah. was good. The the decisions they made given their composition and running that pick composition were good. I really like what we saw. I mean, it's such a it's such a, a little cost, but it's such a big impact. Oh, you know, yeah. huge change, especially yeah. when you're playing together as a team on the professional level. It makes a massive difference. Yeah, even in solo queue. It uh, really should be a priority for everyone out there to get that upgraded trinket ASAP after a uh, level nine. Yeah, I I agree with you. Yeah, just too powerful to ignore. It certainly is. All right, Dragon down. So Jyn Air changing their focus up into the top side, making their way through the jungle. Clearing out those wards. OQ Ooh. not able to do much. And you know, don't, Corky has been the least impressive champion that Oku has. Oku, a very good player, but I just really like him on some more of these bully picks. Yeah, I like I his agree. Lucian, I like his Callista. I think he's better when he can be aggressive and just kind of get in yeah. and brawl a bit. Well, even I like his Kog'Maw. He, he plays his poke so well on Kog'Maw, but Corky, he can't be a lane bully early on like, like he can with a lot of his other preferential picks, and I think that really slows him down. Ooh, Najin may be in a little bit of trouble. 
Very dangerous going through that narrow choke. GBM pushing up the mid lane. Ward's there for uh, Najin, though. Trace is going to recall. Peanut. Q lands on a minion. Trace decides to stick around. I think that's a good idea. If there's going to be a fight, it's going to happen now. There wasn't a fight. <laughs> I'm sorry to disappoint you. Well, at least I said the most obvious non committal thing. It's part of the there skill, man. That's right. It's part of the skill of casting, knowing when to make a statement that could go either way that you can chain it into the next thing happening. Number one casting rule, be ambiguous. OQ, nothing ambiguous about that uh, engage. Chaser trying to catch him in the cataclysm, couldn't quite do it. I disagree. That engage was quite ambiguous. He, uh, <laughs> he was well, just doing it to secure the red buff. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Was he? Yeah. I guess so. Just uh, oh. keeping him zoned out. Didn't want to commit well, to it. That I was guess, the I most guess I, ambiguous engage of this it, game. It dog. fooled me. I guess I can't <laughs> argue with that. That's true. Pulled one over on old Doa there. O OQ not <laughs> wanting to commit to uh, Chaser's engage. Just valking right now. I guess so. <laughs> He's like, I don't want to die. That's, that's also how it works being a caster, is that whatever you say will immediately, the players will do the opposite. Yeah, that's true. That is true. You know, it does steal a red buff right there. They do get some deep wards in. Uh, Trace keeping up with some split pushing right here. Yeah. Two, I mean, a long ways away from getting a, uh, a Zonia's right now. I feel like Jhenner can just kind of keep pushing the lanes and dominating yep. these dragons and just kind of wait for the game to end itself, they, you know? They absolutely can, and they will find these little moments where they can take a tower, Najin's going back, and they don't have that same ability to siege. You know, all the sideline f farm is going to Trace, apparently. He gets it all. We could only be halfway done with this game, though. We're only at about 25 minutes right now. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Jhenner already has three dragons. Something tells me this one won't last that long. But. This could be one of the shortest games we've seen Jhenner play. It'll be a refreshing change of pace for Jhenner as well. Well, you know, I mean, the airlines, they make their money on those long flights, but I, I like <laughs> the short ones myself. Well, Jhenner, they're a short, they're a short carrier. That they're is only, true. They're like they're a local only carrier. Regional, yeah. They're only regional here in Korea. It's not that far to Jeju Island. That's right. If they, yeah. if, if they want to play these long haul games, they need to change the Korean air. That's what they have to do. That's true. Yeah. Who is their parent company? But I, I don't feel but that they're their style of play is adequately matching their sponsor. It, they would have to change too much, though. Like the Korean Air green wings? No, nope. it has to be like the Korean Air red and blue wings, but, <laughs> but usually more blue than red on the planes. I don't know. It's confusing. Oh, wow. Oh. Peanut going in with the kick on a J. Uses the L, pushes people away, though. Peanut going deep again. Goong. Oh, does not survive the Zareth ultimate. So a kill for a kill, but here comes Trace over the wall. Big lockdown, double kill now for GBM, and Tracer into the red buff pit. OQ trapped behind the Cataclysm. Manages to actually get the kill onto Chaser and get out with the flash. Oh, Captain Jack a bit low. Time to back away, and they may actually need to give this dragon up to Najin. Well, hey, oh, wow, Trace went in on that. Ooh. Well, he has GBM there. Oh, it's they can be poke really days. hard for them to actually secure this drag, considering how low Duke is. GBM is there. He yeah. has mana. Uh, boom. A lot of damage on the Peanut. And Trace can try to poke with that Q a little bit. Coming in. There we go on the Peanut. An easy kill. What a combo. GBM dueling with OQ now. Takes some damage. Looks like OQ is going to pick up a kill there. Trace keeping the Dragon engaged before backing off. So it looks like they did prevent that Dragon. They gave up GBM. But I would say if you're going to pick a, a, a time for GBM to die first, that's a good time. Right, saving Dragon right there was the most important thing so they could yeah. really put a timer on in this game because this will be Dragon number four for Jhenner. They have the jungler alive right now, so they're going to present the greater threat around this objective, although Peanut will be up shortly. And Trace right there had a really good Lissandra ultimate in that team fight, deciding to ult himself just to bottle people up so that Jack and GBM could finish a couple of members off. Hey, Goon. Oh, Goon gets the gold card onto Jay. There is a knockup for Jay, so that one connected. Zonia's coming down. Pure. I don't think he can get to the lantern. Nope. Big, oh, boy. Equalizer coming in. Captain Jack slowed. Trace. Done a lot of damage. Duke doing a lot, but yeah, Trace coming in. Gonna ult himself, though. Oh, man. Zonia's. And he's like, where's my team? Well, they've all left wow. you. Wow. Okay, going in on that one when all the members of Najin were right there. Yeah. 
Maybe not oh. the best decision. GBM was still spawning at that stage. And here we go. Now over another Dragon defense. Jinair may not be able to hold on to this one. Really big overcommittal when they should have just gone for that Dragon instead. Jinair getting a little bit throwy at this point. They've got, they've got to throw pretty hard, but they're doing their best in the last few minutes. We'll see if they can deny this Dragon. Jay rushing towards uh, the pit as fast as he leave. can. They want to get Bloom up. They want to push out their top lane. All right. It's reasonable. It's the first Dragon for Najin, so it's, it's not the greatest danger, although that 6%. Uh, damage really does help Najin a lot right now. Wow, Kung just totally baited them into that, too. And with his survivability as a result of that Zonia's Hourglass, Jin Air should have been fine with just poking him out right there and then yeah. backing off and taking the objective. Instead, they get sloppy, hmm. overcommit to the kill on Kung, and they just don't have the backup from GBM there in order to continue to make that play. Man, this is a bit awkward now for Jin Air. They had such a good thing going. And now it's a bit stalled out. You sure we're not going to see a 50 minute game? Well, now we might, Doa. Now we might. It was inevitable. Definitely was. should have just focused on that dragon if you're Jin Air. Try and snowball and push that edge as much as possible. Because you see them come in right here. And they get the knock up twice on Dagoon. They want to kill him. And they try and just, they're trying to block the lantern right there, body block it. Equalizer, equalizer. comes in. But right here, Trace should not have followed up. All Trace had to do was ult Duke and walk away. That's it. They get the pick. Why, why even use your zone is there? You might as well save the cooldown. Nah, if he's going to die, he's, it's going to be off cooldown by the next time you fight. Odds are anyway. Yeah. And maybe you can buy a little bit more time for the rest of your team to get away. Or get back to Dragon in that case, but it didn't end up working out. All right, well, bearing the order of business now for both teams here. A little bit of vision early on for Jin Air. Now, things are getting serious, Monte Cristo. They certainly are. Janeiro wants to make it a close game. <laughs> GBM now working on that Zonia. So he did go for the Void Staff in the end, wants that yeah. little bit of extra damage. But Zonia's now done for Goom. So this is a really good opportunity for Najin. If they're going to make it back into this game, the fact that he can just go in and gold card onto GBM is, and then Zonia's is really important for their engage because they can set up an equalizer and GBM doesn't really have a response to it. Yeah, well, he doesn't have his own Zonia's to kind of respond right. to the engage. And there's no Crucible yet either. Yep. So there's a couple, close, couple factors. Najin does have a nice timing now, but it's not going to be a very long one. In fact, it will be quite short. Yeah, I mean, Jay, that's, he's very, very close to the Crucible. Right, and also GBM isn't that far. He's about 2,000 gold away from, he's 2,050 gold away from that Zonia's right now. Or if he has zero gold, that's how far away he is. Yeah, I imagine he's got a little bit more, but not much. All right, Siege here with GBM. And the Force teleport support. coming in, and there we go. Wow, GBM just pokes him out. Where did Goong end up? Didn't end up engaging. And the fact that that ult is down for a couple minutes is huge for Jin Air. Oh, OQ getting poked hard by and the that's the thing. This Jin Air composition. Whoa! Jeez. This Jin Air composition is so explosive. No kidding. Equalizer. Where's the follow up? Najin doing everything they can to save this turret, but it's not going to help. Jin Air just rushes in anyway. Really good siege from Jin Air yeah. on that one. Using that poke to make it a 4v5. Denying the Twisted Fate ultimate. Denying the Twisted Fate ult, getting OQ, who is one of the key members of their wave clear unit, off the tower as well. Janair playing that, well, that as is, well as you could. That is so big, too, because by the time that GBM Twisted Fate is ult doing is up again. So much damage. Yeah. And by the time the ult is up again, GBM should have his Zonias, I would imagine. May so have gotten it be... off that kill, actually. We'll That's possible. Looks like they're going to lose mid turret, but. Not the worst thing ever. It's only going to be the uh, final outer turret for Najin the Empire. Yeah, and now that they weren't clearing, Najin wasn't clearing the bottom lane, they actually could put a lot of pressure onto this Baron uh, for free because there are minions in the base at the moment. Yeah. So there's actually that actually opened up a big timing here from Jin Air to go ahead, well, they can rush down this Baron if they Baron, want. Yeah. yeah, they can, absolutely. They know Duke's TP is down. He just TP'd onto that tower. They could just... They could totally just go for it. Oh, they very intentionally gave that Rift Scuttler to GBM. Interesting. I wonder if he's, uh, oh, he did, he did get his own, yes. Yep. So I wonder why. Huh. 
He wanted the gold for his elixir of sorcery. Yeah, I was going to say, he wanted to get that. Also, he didn't want to sell his Doran's ring for a ward. GBM, you laughing in the Baron pit, but who's every laughing time, when you need vision next every time? Every time a pro player does that, Joa, I die a little inside. <laughs> One ring to prevent all the vision. Well, Baron getting taken now. Trace doing a bit of zoning behind the pit here. And here we go, Twisted Fate coming in. Are they actually going to make a play on that? Trace was kicked into the pit. Thanks, Peanut. Baron getting a bit low. Oki with the kill. Baron, can they get it? Nope, goes to Graves. Jin Air on the disengage now. GBM a little bit poked. Got to be careful. Some damage tried to get on the Duke. Flash is used. Jin Air needs to get away. Najin is dangerous, and it looks like they'll make it. And the ult! Oh, he gets pure! So much damage being done by that Zareth. Wow. How many people has he killed with that ult so that far this game? That would be three, I think. Three with the ult. He's killed Peanut twice at least. So. Yeah, I think it's three. Three, maybe four, but I'm pretty sure it's three. He's 10, 1, and 0. GBM shares kills with no one. <laughs> He's going for, <laughs> looks like a Banshee's Veil now as well. All just right. to give him some extra help in that back line. I think that's actually a really well, good item for him to grab. Banshee's Veil, you know, plus Zonia's. TF is not a problem anymore. Right, and neither is Rumble, so yeah. that's really quite a good pickup, I think. He also be able to take Corky Rockets. I, that's a really excellent buy. It's not like he's not doing enough damage. Right, yet. he's so far ahead. And uh, right there, Jin Air really not respecting the Twisted Fate ultimate. Oh, and there's a blue buff for Chaser. They absolutely could not make that kind of play. Trace was, he can't, he can't be standing there when TF ult is up, because as soon as it's popped, which you can't assume after you eliminate the vision on the pit that if he finds Trace alone, then they are going to catch him out quite easily. And yeah. you, you saw him try and get back into the pit and immediately get chain CC'd. So he couldn't ult himself. He couldn't use the Sonya's Hourglass. And in fact, it would have been a better call for him to stand on the opposite side of the wall and ult himself hmm. just to secure that Baron instead of trying to get back into the pit and then getting hooked. That's a good point. So yeah, definitely should have just ulted himself on the, the high ground on the back side of the Baron wall instead of making the play he did. Because that made it a little bit more 50-50 in terms of that Baron. Yeah, it was it was a bit close, wasn't it? Yeah, it was way too close for comfort. So that was a misplay from Trace. Well, Jin Air now, they've got the Baron buff. They've got that fourth dragon. So there really isn't any more pressure you could possibly put on Najin. Yeah, honestly, in the game, there's really not any more pressure no. you could put on. Not unless you had a team full of Nidalees. <laughs> Constant sieging and healing, man, that would be That's annoying. Right. Yeah, maybe Riot will have a mode where everyone has to play the same champion. Oh wait, they already did that, didn't they? They did, all for one, yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. Oh, never mind. That was a good idea, Riot. Way to go. <laughs> Another easy turret. Good thing, and an easy inhibitor. Good thing Riot has that time machine so they can steal your ideas from right now. How do they do that? <laughs> it's like Looper, man. <laughs> Only they just send people to the to the future, to, uh, to the past. I don't know, they send people somewhere. Nick Allen has to close the loop. <laughs> Oh, that's going to be a dead top lane turret. Indeed it will. I'd watch Nick Allen with the blunderbuss. I think See, he brought it back full circle, the blunderbuss, Nostella. And Bruce Willis still <laughs> plays his future self. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's going to be much pushing Janeiro away at this point. We'll see. Najin, kind of a last-ditch effort engage, I would imagine, coming in here, Duke. Looking for an opportunity, but the Winions have began to enter the base. The Winions working against Najin now. Well, it's mostly, is it, oh no, it's mostly shield this game. Yeah. More Winion than ever. Oh, actually, it's mostly, it's mostly sword. Goong the only shield member, so there you oh. go. I can't remember who's on what team. Come on. I play by play. Goon comes in with the Zonias, gets oh. knocked up. Wow, Chaser, what timing. And GBM just throwing the ult in there. Doesn't kill anybody. He gets them so low, though. And Jin Air is like, yep, we don't need any more kills. We just need this to be a 2-0. And a 2-0 it will be at 37 about minutes. No, wait. They're going to, OK, they're going to leave that inhibitor. They can kill it now. Peanut coming in, kicks Chaser back out. But it's not going to help anything. Only OQ and Duke left alive. Heals coming in from Jay just to keep everybody topped off. There goes the Nexus. And Jin Air will take a very convincing game number two against Najini Empire. And overall, that's a 2-0 for Jin Air. GG. Well, 
The TF, I think, was a good idea, but the execution of the mid lane ganks from Chaser and Che early really got GBM ahead, and yeah. getting GBM ahead on Zareth uh, makes winning very difficult for opposing teams. We rarely see him get his hands on that champion anymore just because of how insanely good he is with it. Well, now you know. 11, 1, and 2 for GBMs, or now you've been reminded, really. <laughs> Yeah, a bit of a rough Don't. time from Najin. And yeah. I really like it when Najin plays these more like more aggressive lane picks, especially on OQ, because that's his strength, right? He mm. he does have that really strong laning. He does get kills in the laning phase, so why not put him on some champions where he can really excel instead well, of that quirky? GBM doesn't even look happy to have totally dominated that game. He's like, I missed a couple of my Zarethal shots. I am 